a key part of any data architecture is how you're going to extract and load your data. And one of the most common sources that you're going to pull from is a database, and in particular, Postgres databases. You might see this used as the back end of an internal application at your company. There might be a variety of different services, or it might be a third party tool. Because of this, it's really important that you can easily extract from this source and maybe more importantly, do it in a way that's performant and efficient for your team. So in today's video, you're going to see how you can set up a Postgres connector using Airbyte. We're going to go through step by step how to configure it, the different options you have for extracting the data, and also some performance considerations when dealing with really large data sets. Now, just in case you're brand new to Airbyte, Airbyte is a data extraction tool that's going to allow you to move data from your source systems over to an analytics database. And in this case, we're going to talk about moving Postgres data to a BigQuery database. It has a huge catalog of connectors, over 300 pre-built connectors at the time of this recording. And if for some reason you can't find what you need in those 300 plus connectors, you can build or edit any custom connector in just a few minutes with their no code interface here to get that going. And all this can be managed either through a UI, which we'll see here in this example through Terraform or through a straight up API call. As you can see, a big thing here is the extensibility, the customization, and in general, just the open source community behind it. And as mentioned, Airbyte does come with an open source option. So you can completely own the entire infrastructure yourself, or you can do the other options. You can have the self manage where you still stay on premise, but you get a little bit more support, or you can do what's called powered by Airbyte, which allows you to put a layer of your own product on top of the Airbyte functionality. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use Airbyte Cloud for this example. And all you need to do is go to sources and Postgres to get started. Now, right away, you're met with a bunch of options to fill things in, but there are a few prerequisites that we need to talk about. So over here on the right, I'm going to go immediately down to the quick start just to get us on the same page. And the three things we need to do here are one, create a dedicated read only Postgres user with permissions for replicating data. And you may already have one of those. You need to create a new Postgres source in Airbyte UI. So we're gonna then do this. And third, if you're using Airbyte Cloud, allow inbound traffic from Airbyte IPs. And we're not gonna cover this part in this video, but this is something that you need to consider if you're using Airbyte Cloud. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and create a user. I'm gonna go split screen here with my PG admin, which is connected to my server. So I'm gonna copy this here. I'll create a user, call this KDS demo user and I'll put a password. All right, so go ahead and run this. Next, we need to provide this user with read-only access to the relevant schemas and tables. So I'll update the user here. In this case, I'm actually just gonna update this to a specific table because this is really the only one we're concerned with. Now let's run this last one and we should be good to go here. If you're working on something that where you need all the tables, you could uh, use the original script. All right, so with that in play here, let's set up the source here in Airbyte itself. So I'm gonna go and fill in this information based on my server, database name, password. Now you need to select a security mode and the most frequent one as it says are require or verify CA. I'm not going to go over what each of these mean specifically, but uh, you would pick what makes sense for your purposes. Next is the replication method. So there are three options here. Number one is read changes with the write ahead log. And this is most commonly known as CDC, which stands for change data capture. And essentially anytime you take an action in your database, it's going to log it into a separate logging area where you can then read the different inserts, updates, deletes, every individual action gets captured. Next is detect changes with X min system column. And this is recommended, especially if you have a smaller table or maybe you don't have a reliable primary key on a table that you can use. This will help you with inserts and updates, but it's not going to help you as much with deletes because you don't have a primary key to let you know that something was actually changed and it's the same record, but it will still allows you to do that incremental changing uh, as new inserts and updates come through. And the last one is a user defined cursor. And this, as it sounds, will let you define what the column should be to understand when something has changed. So a cursor column, for example, uh, when you're setting up your table could be an updated at column, created at something like that. And it allows you to select how Airbyte should look for new changes in your database coming through. So those are the three options you have. In our case, we're gonna start with the X min system column and go through and attempt to set up this source. Now, the last thing here is you need to allow inbound traffic to these IPs in your firewall setting. Now, I'm not gonna cover the networking part in this demo, but this is something to consider if you're using Airbyte Cloud specifically. All right, so with that said, let's now set up source and it's gonna go through and test the source and make sure that our connections are working. All right, so you can see all connections pass, so we are ready to go. Now, at this point, we could go ahead and just create a connection and start syncing our data. But what I wanna do before we do that is actually change something because what I wanna do is do the read changes using write ahead logs. This is gonna give you the most information and typically be the most accurate method if you can set it up. So let's go through and do that here. Now, again, there are some things to consider. And as I mentioned before, you would use the CDC change data capture approach 
typically when you want to record deletions, because we mentioned you may not get that with these here, you have a very large database. So let's say 500 gigabytes or more. Your table has a primary key, and this is the most important part, but doesn't have a re reasonable cursor for incremental syncing. We talked about what a cursor was just a moment ago, but really the key thing here is a primary key. Because if you don't have a primary key, this isn't going to work very well, and you're going to have to use something like the X-Men system column. Now, because this is important, I want to show you how to set this up. So there's a few different steps. You're going to have to provide some additional permissions to that user we created, as well as enable some database level permissions. Now, some of this is already set on my database, but I'll at least walk you through some of it and show you how to change some of this stuff. All right, so step one is to set up the source, which we just did. Now we need to provide additional permissions to that user. So let me copy that. Go ahead and run that. Now our user has replication added to it. Now here's where you need to enable some replication on the database level. And this is something, again, we're not gonna cover in this, but I do wanna just mention that you'd have to actually go into a specific file and make some changes. And there's a link to the documentation that can help walk you through it. So here's an example of what the file looks like and some more steps that you have to take. So this is definitely a more advanced feature, but something that there's plenty of documentation and can walk you through how to do it. That will look a little different depending on your use case. So we're not gonna cover that here. Plus it's already handled where I'm at. Step four, create a replication slot on your Postgres database. And this is where Airbyte is going to look for any of those logs that change data capture log that's gonna come through. It would be here just for Airbyte. Now, again, this is already handled on my server, but you would just simply copy and paste this in there and it's going to create that slot for you. Step five, create a publication for each table you wanna replicate with CDC. So for each one, you would go through and do this. So let's go ahead and copy this in here. And in my case, instead of table one, it's going to be public KDS demo. So now that returned successfully. So now we've created a replica. The last part here is creating the publication for these specific tables. And this has already been done and it's called Airbyte Benchmark, but just in case you wanna know how to do it, the command that was run was benchmark for table and you can add the individual tables here. This is the command you would run to create the publication and add that table there. And now the replica has been added to this publication and it's ready for consumption from a tool like Airbyte. Added the name of the slot here and the publication, as I mentioned, is already created on my server. So I've just called it Airbyte Benchmark and copy that in here. And now let's go and test these changes. Okay, all tests pass. So now we have our Postgres instance set up, have CDC enabled, and can go and connect it to a database, in our case, BigQuery, to sync that data over and have it continuously monitoring for changes. From connections, I'm gonna do create your first connection. And the source we're gonna use is an existing one, this per Postgres one that we just created. And now for a destination, if you don't already have one, you would have to create a destination, but I've already configured BigQuery. And here we can set up the connection. So you can give it a custom name if you want. I'll leave it as is. The data residency for me is United States. I'm going to set a manual frequency. You can adjust the namespace if you'd like in terms of the location of, of what it looks like when it lands. You can add a prefix to all of your tables if you'd like, as well as pick a setting for how it handles schema changes. So here at the bottom, it has our KDS AB demo table as a new stream. We can see it can be an overwrite or append because of the way the table is designed. We'll keep it as a pen. We're gonna keep all the fields that are in here and we can see it has some CDC tables as well for us and set up the connection. Okay, so now it's set up. The last step here is to sync the data into BigQuery. To sync this data over, we'll go over to sync now and kick off our first initial data sync and, and start moving our data from Postgres over to BigQuery. And eventually we'll see this in my BigQuery project over here. So a big consideration for anybody using Postgres is performance, especially if you have a large data set. In this case, because it's a demo, it's only about one gigabyte. But if you're working with something much larger, performance is a huge consideration. If you're curious in what Airbyte is doing to address this, there's an article where they go into some of the performance enhancements they've done through this particular connector. And in particular, over the last six months, or maybe a little longer at the time of this recording, they've been able to multiply their speed by up to 10 for some of their big connectors, including Postgres SQL. So in this article, they break down what some of the things that they did and the results that they got. So I encourage you to come check this out. For context here, they were able to move over almost a terabyte and a half, and they were able to measure their results from Postgres to Snowflake using Airbyte. 
And the big takeaway here is to understand that performance is a huge consideration when you work with big data sets. And they've been doing a lot of research to figure out what specific areas can be improved to consistently increase that performance and really try to mimic real life conditions. For example, with Postgres connector, there was actually a data type issue that became a bottleneck. So they were able to find ways to make it even more efficient. And then going forward is parallelization. And obviously that's a big thing here, especially with a lot of modern cloud databases. So again, performance is a huge thing to consider when comparing different data ingestion tools. And I encourage you to come check out this article and other resources about what Airbyte has to offer. Now, if we go back to our job history, we can see all 6 million records were successfully loaded. And if I go back to BigQuery here and refresh the contents, now I can see I have an Airbyte data set, an Airbyte internal, and we can see within here, the data has all been loaded and I can preview and see all this information. So we've now successfully synced our data from Postgres to BigQuery and going forward, we'll continue to get each individual change because of the change data capture settings we set up in the previous section. All right, so hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to use Postgres with Airbyte and how you can easily start to sync that data over into your own data warehouse. And if you have more questions or wanna learn more about this connector, I'll leave a link below to the official Airbyte documentation where you can dive even deeper into all the things that are possible here. And then lastly, if you're looking for more Airbyte specific content, I also recommend going to check out their YouTube channel. They post a lot on their own and they have a lot of great content on how to use the tool and just general concepts. But that'll do it for this video. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next one.